<laughs> I was here uh, for a day in August and spent the day around the complex and watched practice and it was immediately evident that things were different, but I will confess to being somewhat skeptical because I thought, well, what you do in one practice in August and what you actually uh, pull out and do in a game, sometimes entirely different things. But uh, they've committed to it, and I've said this a lot. I really commend Ed for it because a lot of coaches say, that, well, we need to change. We need to get more explosive. We need to do this. We need to do that. Yet they've reach the level where they are due to a certain philosophy and a lot of times coaches are too stubborn, too scared, too set in their ways, whatever, to change. And he allowed the change. And I think uh, LSU is reaping the benefits and I give, while Joe Brady is brilliant and a rising star, I give a ton of credit for to Ed for seeing the need and then following through with it. Reese, is there kind of a national feeling that Yes, LSU scored a lot of points, and they won a big game at Texas, but they haven't played a defense like this, and let's see how they do against Florida. I, yes, but I don't think it's not cast in the light of doubting LSU. I think those things are true. Um, Texas is a, you know, is a decent defense. It's not to the level of Florida's defense. Texas is a, I should rephrase, Texas is a good defense, not necessarily a great one. Uh, Florida is potentially a great defense. It doesn't mean that LSU's uh, numbers and accomplishments are somehow diminished. It's just, it's just a fact. It is going to be the biggest challenge that they've had. Um, I don't expect them to go in and roll up 55 like they've been doing on everybody else against Florida. But a really good night's work, in my judgment, from Florida's defense would be holding LSU to 28 to 31. That's a little different, you know, and I think that's a that's a compliment. If, if, I, if my memory serves, I think LSU is averaging right at 55 points a game, and Florida's given up 57 all season. So, you know, it is clearly the biggest challenge for both. It, LSU hasn't seen a defense like this, nor has Florida seen an offense like the one they're going to see Saturday night. What are your thoughts? Uh Ed Ogeron, you know, he was he was mocked nationally and kind of made fun of at the old Ole Miss, and now he's settled in and doing a good job. I mean, what is he earning respect now? I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, he is a uh, – one of the reasons those of us who love college football love Coach O is because he is a character, and he has been able to hold on to his personality – while still making, sort of like the offense that I was talking about earlier, while making changes necessary to be uh, an outstanding head coach. He's doing a terrific job here. And I think that's the ultimate sign of growth in a person when you see something that needs changing and you have the courage and the ability to do that. And, you know, he, you know, Ole Miss is a tough job to begin with, and he probably at that time in his career wasn't ready for that. Now at this time in his career, he is ready for it. He understood what needed to change, and he's done it. And I think he deserves a boatload of credit. I mean, the number one thing for any head coach is can you, I mean, at the risk of offending all of the X and O purists, the number one thing, can you get them to play hard for you? And the answer with Coach O in that is a resounding yes. Now he's added to that the ability to get them to play hard, giving them Dave Aranda, Joe Brady around to, uh, to put them in the best position to not only play hard, but to have great success from a schematic standpoint too. What's the national perspective on LSU's defense? Because it's usually the unit that carries the team, and this year it's been a little bit, a little bit flipped. I think the biggest thing with their defense right now is they've been hurt. I mean, they've had, you know, whether it's Lawrence and Logan and Divinity and Caleb has been, you know, beat up a little bit and then what Delpit bit his lip or whatever and, uh, you know, had to leave the game the other day. So I think they just haven't been at, at full strength. I believe that much of the, you know, the number of points they gave up against Texas got a little gassed and that's a really good offense they faced. Don't worry so much about Vanderbilt because most of that game was decided, you know, when, when a lot of that happens. So, um, you know, I think it's still regarded as a really talented unit. Um, maybe not quite the explosive, disruptive pass rushers that they've always had, but man, oh man, those guys in the back end, I mean, forget it. Stingley's, Stingley's every, every bit as good as advertised, if not better. Everybody knows Delpit's a stud. Fulton's a terrific player. Uh, you know, they've They've got legit dudes in the back end, and they've got good players everywhere else. I'm a big fan of Chase on. I think he's an excellent player. How does the fair pay-to-play act, Bill, in California really affect the smaller states like Louisiana that doesn't even have it on the, on the docket yet? I don't think it affects anything until it passes. I mean, it's 2023, but um, 
I think here's a couple of things. Number one, I think the athletes should be treated like every other student on this campus. There is not a student on this campus where they go, well, if you go and take an engineering internship and get paid for it, you are compromising your education. It's preposterous. Uh, those are not mutually exclusive things. And what this does is it keeps, it keeps the schools from having to make the players employees and which I don't think they should do, but I absolutely think they ought to have the right to their name, image, and likeness. If, if there's a, a car dealer in Bogalusa that wants to bring Joe Burrow down to sign autographs, who cares? Good for him. Write the man a check. Give that man his money, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm fine with that. This does not compromise education. You can set parameters. You can make guidelines. You can, you, know, you can make them file taxes. You can let them have representation, just like all adults are able to do. We like to throw around the term kids, and I've got children that age, college-age children. They're my children, but they are adults now, and they, they can make decisions. And, you know, guess what? I hate to say it, but sometimes people get to make mistakes. And, you know, I... We have all this hand wringing over, well, if we, if we let them go and make money, they might not invest it wisely. How many of you guys know 50-year-old people who don't invest their money wisely? You know, there's, there's, no, there's no age limit that says, okay, once you're 28, well, then you know how to invest, you know, it's, or you know how to save. You know, it's, it's just doing what's right. And the right thing is, the way this has exploded as a business is not to make the schools make them employees. The right thing is just to lift the limitations. Let them get out in the free market. Let the market decide. Because you know what? And I'm on a rant here. I mean, I'm rolling with you now. But here's the thing. I really believe this too. There will be a year, two years, three years, something where there will be a lot of really, really, really bad investments made by people eager to help get someone in or, or hire someone or have them represent their business early on. Uh, at LSU and other places, there'll be a lot of bad investments made. And after you make a couple of bad investments, and after you throw some money at some guy who doesn't get on the field, then you're going to take a step back, right? And, and you're going to wait, and you're going to see what's wise for you. And I, the market will take care of this like it does everything else in our culture. And I think that that's the best course of action we could have. It doesn't compromise our education. It the only thing it does is it takes away this uh, notion that you and I probably had our whole lives that has never really existed, that everybody just is out there for the good old glory of state you. They enjoy that, but that's not everything. And I think the best thing is just to lift the restrictions. Let the market take care of it. Now, other than that, I have no opinion on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to talk about this anymore. You're going to get back to ball. Here he is. He's serious football here. Okay, I'm sorry. But Joe Burrow, but what you've seen, him not just as a, uh, I guess, a passer, but as a leader, just as his kind of his, he's got a little cocky to him. Yeah, he does. He, uh, he's got a little toughness, a little swagger. to story last night about a um, earlier game this year where some of the people on the opposing sidelines who knew him previously were trying to get under his skin, get him off his game. He started telling them, we're about to put 500 on you, you know? So he's, and his teammates love that. He has, he has exceeded everything as a passer, uh, exceeded what I thought was possible. I mean, when I was down here in August, you know, Coach O was telling me, look, he's a difference maker now. And I was like, okay, I know he's tough. I know he's a good leader. I know he knows ball. But is he really a difference maker? The answer to that question is yes. I mean, he's been uh, he's he's been terrific for them, not only as a player but as a leader. And I think that uh, I think that little edge, that little demeanor, that little uh, cockiness that he has, really plays well. And guys uh, guys really want to play for him. When you're uh, preparing for this game, I mean, you saw him last year. How much different do you see this team than it's been? Offensively, I mean, they're night and day. I mean, they can score quickly now. And it, it seemed like, you know, it seemed like the extraction of a molar in the past, you know, for them to drive down the field. And it's not that way anymore. Now, now they can quick strike and tempo and they have answers. And Todd Grantham was talking this week about how, um, you know, so many of their answers come after the snap, which is a little bit different too. So I think, uh, I think it's, it's completely different offensively than what we've seen. And defensively, um, once they get healthy, they're going to they're be fine. They are fine. They're fine now. But they're going to be, when they get to be full strength, they'll, you'll have to handle them defensively as well.
You've been here many times. I know it's a standard mm -hmm. question we ask you. What makes Baton Rouge special? What makes Death Valley special in doing the show here? There's just an intensity to it. There's a passion for the program. There's a passion for the state and the culture in the state and a, and a real pride. And there's just, I don't know, it's, maybe it's, you know, the stadium is a little older. There's a, there's a vibe and a feeling when you walk in there, particularly for a night game that is, you know, there are, there are a lot of other great places. I mean, uh, Penn State at night, a whiteout is really cool. Uh, you know, Notre Dame's cool. A lot of places, uh, you know, Alabama's cool, uh, but there's just something about this place that I don't know that you can quantify in a sentence other than just to say that there is uh, a deep-seated, from the gut, from the heart passion that is evident when you when you step out on the field. Last question, guys. It's okay. There's no question about it. I mean, he didn't have the preseason hype for the Heisman that other guys have, but his in-season thing is what matters. And we've had a lot of Heisman winners in recent years that didn't have a lot of attention in the preseason. So his biggest stages are to come. This will be one on Saturday night. The one in Tuscaloosa will be a big stage for him. Potential SEC championship game will be a big stage. And all of those things will have a huge impact on it. But there is no question that he is a legitimate a Heisman contender and at this at this moment in time at this point as we sit here in early to mid-October he has as much of a claim to it as anyone in the sport. What do you think about just his charisma and personality? Uh, as I was saying earlier he's got an edge to him you know he's got a little cockiness a little swagger that I think plays well with his teammates and they really want to fight for him because they think hey if our quarterback is acting like that then uh, he, he must he must know something that everybody else ought to know, and he's showing them right now for sure. Thank you, guys.